At age 26, Michael Tubbs became the youngest mayor in the history of Stockton, California. He also became the target of a local website owned by a future political opponent that would dog him for the remainder of his term. So how did this one outlet's disinformation campaign likely contribute to this rising star's downfall? I was reporting another story about Stockton, California, and I basically just got this weird tip. Somebody told me that Stockton had its own version of Russian trolls. Um, and you know, you're a journalist. Yeah. My interest was piqued. That's Yo Wei Shaw, co-host of NPR's Invisibilia podcast. She reported a three-part series for her program called The Chaos Machine. It looked at the local news climate in Stockton and one widely read but controversial website. From the beginning of Two and Nine Times' birth, they were going after Michael Tubbs. Right after Michael Tubbs was elected, Two and Nine Times popped up and just started relentlessly going after Michael with negative story after negative story, saying all kinds of things that millions of dollars in scholarships were missing from the foundation that he was in charge of. They painted a picture of him as a corrupt, out of touch, disrespectful politician. Yoei is careful to say that 209 Times is not just a site for conspiracies or misinformation. It can be a helpful resource, but that's what makes it so concerning. As Yoei explains it, 209 Times' stories have a spectrum of truthiness and we're seeing more sites like this pop up around the country to fill the local news void. So why would 209 Times focus so much on this young politician? Well, part of the reason may be that 209 Times was created by a man named Motekazoma Sanchez, who went on to run against Tubbs in the 2020 primary when Michael was up for re-election. Sanchez, of course, benefited from his website's coverage. One thing that I was able to do is Facebook has a pretty good search page. So if you look at Motek Sanchez, who's the owner of this outlet and runs it, he ran for mayor against Michael Tubbs in 2020. And you pretty much just see, like, these are like puff pieces, endorsements, the investigative reporter of Two and Nine Times endorsing him. All positive stories. Also, all positive stories, not disclosing that he runs the site. And then, if you were to look at Michael Tubbs and run the same search, all you see, again, Michael Tubbs caught in a camera, ignoring constituents to play on cell phone. It's like all negative stories about him. Also of note, his ownership information isn't listed on the website's About Us page. When speaking to Yoei, Sanchez said all the information on the site is accurate, but she found several examples of demonstrably false claims made about Mayor Michael Tubbs. This is a story about Michael Tubbs saying that he's caught working a full-time job in New York. Normally, you would see the byline at the top or at the bottom. Let's search if there's a byline. Okay, no byline. I think that's a red flag because if there's no byline, how do you know whether the person who wrote the story has a conflict of interest? Yoei eventually found that Tubbs' involvement with the Bloomberg campaign was unpaid and not full-time. She confronted Sanchez with this example when she first questioned the article's accuracy. When I confronted Motek with this information, he was just like, meh. I mean, it's basically true. Um, and so I think what what they're doing is like basically saying we are journalists and we are providing news that is trustworthy and also we don't have to play by any of the traditional journalism norms. We don't care about the same standards of fact checking. We don't care about the same standards of fairness. It's these journalistic standards that help provide reliable, trustworthy news. So when a site like 209 Times doesn't disclose who writes the articles, misrepresents, public record, doesn't regularly issue corrections, or is overly reliant on anonymous sourcing, that's all cause for concern. Anonymous sources should be used sparingly because if you don't know who is giving the information, then how do you evaluate how credible it is if there's a conflict of interest? That's why there's like a really high bar for news outlets to use anonymous sources. 
209 Times is just one local site, but the dearth of local news creates opportunities for sites like it to fill the void. So ask yourself these questions when evaluating whether resources are potentially trustworthy. Do you know who wrote the article? Can you find ownership information? Are there undisclosed conflicts of interest? Is the sourcing clear? Does the site issue corrections to its errors? We live in a different reality than we did 20 years ago when it comes to local news. It's why this new phenomenon is so frightening and alarming, because we can't just rely on our local newspaper journalists who have been trained in certain ways and abide by standard journalistic norms to kind of like come save the day and like fact check against sites like this. Thanks to Yoe Shaw from NPR's Invisibilia for joining us. Until next time, don't spread fake news, keep it real. I'm Hari Srinivasan and this is Take On Fake. Follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more episodes, clips, and Take On Fake tips. Thanks for watching.